Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews, and me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I'm Alison Filler here and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Melissa Matthews. Hi Melissa, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you Alison. It's good to be back. Good to be back talking about more wise things. (laughs) Oh, and I'm so excited about this week's topic. You know, we've named this podcast Sacred Sessions for a reason and this topic that we're going to talk about this week we are going to talk about connecting to the angel realm and connecting to your angels and guides and this one this topic has been really divinely inspired I feel from the angels obviously and is a really sacred topic to talk about this week um, I think in this in this episode we're going to talk about how we've experienced working with the angels and how that all first started for us, um, the different ways they appear, that um, are they around us all the time, different angels for different purposes, and how we have found our best way to connect to them. And we're going to share our favorite little tips and ways to connect to the angel realm and to our spirit guides. So, Melissa, take it away. Where would you like to start with this? Okay. So this is a really hot topic for me. I love it. Um, It comes up in my readings that I do quite a lot as a clairvoyant. And, uh, you know, the angels and guides are pretty insistent, you could say, about they want to be recognized, they want us to use them or give an angel a job as they as they call it as well. You know, they want us as human beings to understand that we have this connection with the angelic realms, with the spiritual realms, that it is not far, far away, that it is within us, the connection, and that it's important for us. And it what it what I've noticed that it does for people, not only myself but for other people, is it it really made a big difference when I realized I never felt alone, but I wondered how I could communicate and connect with them. Like what was the, you know, what was the easiest way? Because I'm all about being easy and practical and, you know, demystifying things because to me that spiritual connection is inherent with all of us. So, you know, let's make the most use of it. Angels and guides um, and the energetic realms, they cannot interfere. So we have to ask them, we have to invite them into our lives. We have to invite them into our hearts. And uh, and once we get used to it and we understand how it feels and how it doesn't feel, because, you know, we've got to be a little bit clear about certain things as well, like who we're connecting with. And also we want to know, okay, does this angel or God belong with me? Are they of the highest? Are they coming from the purest source, the highest vibration? And how can they help me? So, you know, so... I've loved working with with them and I I remember I did a course a a few years ago and it was um and I called it angels and guides who are they and why they follow me around and it was such a good it was such a good afternoon this particular one I remember and it was so simple and so easy and you know the, the questions that people ask everything was answered in such an easy way and and everyone felt pretty good about it so that's why I'm really want to talk today about this you know and about how we can just integrate it into our everyday life you know and when we set aside the time to do this you know and to bring through information that's valuable to us that can help us because you know what they do actually know us best they are without judgment without in um without influence and so they can help us and help us right down in our in our souls to start expressing who we really are within the world and that brings in a lot more kindness and it sets a tone for the people around us as well so you know so there you go so what are you going to start with Alison because I know that um, you've got actually some really good advice to start with immediately (laughs) <laughs> always, like, always, just, i'm just so excited about this topic being able to talk to it you know about it and about the angels and about how they you know come around and what they do 
Well, yes. For me, I mean, like I shared in the previous um, episode, you know, what I named my daughter, you know, 20 years ago, Angel, the, you know, this, this, this daughter that I miscarried. And it wasn't until like a few years later that, and I started to um, learn about natural therapies and holistic therapies and, and, you know, develop my spiritual intuition that angels were just um, obviously Popping something on my radar. <laughs> Pardon? Popping up everywhere, sorry. <laughs> they were angels. And a great place for where I, I started was um, reading some books and buying some angel cards. I was really drawn to learning about the angels and so reading books and buying some oracle cards, angel cards were just, I just loved it. I was so fascinated with it. And then it wasn't until I did a few meditation classes myself where we were connecting to the angel realm um, where I first felt and saw and uh, and heard from the angel realm and it was pure magic. It was just this feeling of absolute unconditional love and mm -hmm. it's something I'd never ever felt before, this energy wrapping around me like a blanket like the most beautiful high vibrational warm hug of unconditional love and i'll never forget it and i get the goosebumps I'm now, now. <laughs> as they're blending with us today you know and, I'm, and we're talking about it you know many people have experienced that goosebumps that angel yeah. bumps and it was just so beautiful and it brought me to tears mm. it literally just brought me to tears and ever since then I have been so you know loved integrating that more and more into my life not just waiting until you know the wheels fall off my life that I like <laughs> <laughs> help angels but we've learned to be them. proactive Alison we can be honest we've learned to be proactive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, back in the day, you just like only when the shit hit the fan or all the wheels fall off that you're like, oh, help angels. You know, some people just use them in the car park all the time, just calling in their parking angels, which is just, you know, <laughs> but actually have you know, using them in my everyday life. And we're going to talk about how we do that and um, hmm. and how to connect to them. Yeah. Well, I remember my, so they've always been around me, but, you know, like, I remember going along and I really had no idea about like meditations or healing meditations or whatever. So I went along to this uh, workshop and um, and within that it was, um, it was about your connection and things like that as well. But it was about, you know, there was a, a component of it, which was a short meditation about meeting your angel and guide. Um, so you would ask the question and they would step forward and, and you'd feel it. And my goodness, I just remember this feeling of absolute bliss I was sitting there you know with my eyes closed and there was no visual stimulation or um, any other thing around I could really concentrate in that moment on what I was doing which was really beautiful so again you know that energy helped me but um, and I just remember this overwhelming feeling of love coming into my body and it was the most it was actually a beautiful feeling because even though I knew that they were around me and, I, and now I know that they're around me all the time it's actually taking that time out to connect with with them and it can be the most appropriate one that will step forward say within a you know within my daily spiritual practice or whatever but it they feel different but they all feel beautiful and I feel such love and compassion come come forward from them and it actually helps me to be a better person um, mm. because I can then I know what that means and I can take that into my everyday life so I can feel more compassion, not only for myself, but also for others. So so that's what um, this angelic connection has actually helped me with. So everyone, you know, would know by now that they help us within our work as well. So they have particular roles, some of them. And then, but then there's ones that, you know, help us particularly within our personal lives and things like that as well. So, so they, how do you experience them, Melissa, for everyone at home? Do you tend to see them, hear them, smell them, um, sense um, them? Yeah, well, that's a really good question. So I sense them. 
I, I experience it in every single way possible. So I'm completely open to how I experience them. So I haven't put any limitations on that. So they can appear energetically. And so I might see them as um, quavering energy, but it's always, it's a very light, um, it's a, it's not a heavy energy. It's um, very beautiful and light. So I can see them like that. I can see them as orbs, which are like, almost like light dots that sort of shoot around the room. Um, mm. And sometimes I, um, I've seen them in some of the episodes that we've actually filmed, like the orbs, so, but they're on, um, you can, they're, they're more obvious um, that they're around you and I when it's just you on the screen or me on the screen. But we've definitely seen them and noticed that. And so there'll be like a gold orb that sort of flips around. So those are, those are really good things. I have seen them um, in what we call a traditional thing where the, um, they appear as light, but in the shape of an angel. And I mean like a large angel. It's suppose it depends on how we are open to seeing them as well. Yeah. Um, I have actually experienced what I would call like an angel, an angel appearing in, I suppose what you would call like human form come to help me. You know, so that is something, um, and then I've looked around afterwards and they've disappeared. So, you know, that, that's an interesting, <laughs> that's interesting as well because, you know, a lot of people have had those experiences and they've looked around and suddenly that person that has helped us in that moment has gone. And yeah. we've always wondered. And so many people do wonder about that. Um, how else would I experience them? Um, I see them as frequency as well and light and vibration. And the best thing would be like this beautiful feeling. It's not a really high elated feeling. I, I want to express that it's a very calm feeling and presence. Their personalities will come through. So, uh, you know, so I get ones that are, um, so I can, I have a process for this and I really want to make this clear. So I'm, I really connect up through God first and then come down that way to ensure with who I'm connecting with. So, um, so like with Archangel Michael, like his presence is very calming. He's, um, he, he's, he's, he's very calming. That's all I can say. That's probably the best, best way <laughs> to describe him. I don't know. Many people have different things, but to me, he's very calming. It's like having a good conversation, but he's firm. He's firm. That's all I can say. Trustworthy. Um, he's very trustworthy. Very but trustworthy. That, it's reassuring to have him there. Yeah, really mm. reassuring. And yep. so then, um, and then, you know, and then there's some other archangels, you know, and they're a little bit lighter and they might come in to help me with, um, uh, when I was uh, going through my illness, you know, there were ones that would come in and they were they were very nurturing and they were um, they were specifically to help me through those medical difficulties and to guide me. And so that might appear to some people as just like that's an idea to follow through with and to do that, mm. um, you know, to do this particular process or to go out um, to look after yourself in that way or to draw back and it's time to rest. So they appear in, in different ways, um, and that can come through in my thoughts as well as a strong thought. And I'll say, who is that? And it will be um, Joffiel or um, Chamuel. Um, so, you know, but I'm very, very clear about who I'm actually connecting with because I love, <laughs> I'm like that, and I really just want to make sure that I'm not getting the wrong um, information or, you know, wasting my time and things like that as well. So I'm um, basically as light as feeling, um, uh, touch and overwhelming, beautiful presence on many nights where, um, I know, I know that I've woken up at night. Actually, when I used to be in this room, this used to be a bedroom <laughs> and this is why I love this room so much. And this is why I maintain this color in this, um, Say it's a sacred space for me because I would wake up at night and the room, it's a room where it's all blacked out, Alison, but <laughs> it is um, cause for light and noise and so I can sleep properly, but the room is light, white light in it and golden beautiful. light. And it's just this beautiful um, presence and so I could actually concentrate on who was in the room. And so they may not appear in, in what we would see as traditional forms, but but they are definitely there and they are definitely feel. There's a feeling that it fit, like that they feel good. But I always ask as well who they are and if they're meant to be here. So, mm. but I and, don't know. And what do you, you have a particular guardian angel that yeah. you connect to or have that you've connected to? Yes, I do, yeah. So... Um, 
can appear what I find with my guardian angel and I believe that there's actually two but this particular one that I connect to is male and is older and that's how he appears to me so he's more like um the wise one like guiding me through and yeah so that particular one I really um have benefited benefited from knowing him and um so it brings light through wise guidance and then obviously I have like other team members as I call them my team my peeps um and particularly some of them were permanent they are permanent and some of them are more like casuals and so they'll come in for different things in my life mm -hmm. particularly when um I was looking to become more engaged in my life and to bring in a sense of joy and fun because I was really serious so that mm -hmm. was really good so there'd be a lot Absolutely. of humor in that going on yeah hmm what about you? Very good. Well, being a self-described little earth angel myself. That you are. You are. So I... you're another angel that walks the earth. But you just don't disappear on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you know, you know, we can um, definitely have humans in our life that have, you know, come into our life at different times that have been like just an angel in our life that have just helped us so much or been been there for us and one of the biggest things that has been such a blessing for me to learn as I um, went through massive change in my life and opened had to open up to a power greater than me and open up to you know the the spirit realm was actually realizing that there is a whole other you know realm out there that is helping me you know being a little earth angel you you know without any spirit team without any belief in a higher power or anything is an earth angel on a collision course for you know crisis <laughs> because it, it's tough it being. makes a difference when you realize you're not alone well, like that's that's right. You know, I used, you know, I used to think that I was the one who had to help fix and rescue everybody. And, you know, I talk about that a lot in my work, being an earth angel or a self-described earth angel and, yeah. and what that means. Someone who literally just feels drawn all the time to help fix and rescue people, but without any support. And so I've realized that, wow, if I come, you know, if we have this, if we're like this, then we need our own support system and to have connection now to the angels and the guides and my guardian angels. And it's interesting that you say that you, you feel you have two guardian angels. Mm. I feel, you know, I, I have two myself. Mm. Um, often people will ask me, oh, who are my guardian angels or what are their yeah. names? And you know, sometimes I can give that information and it does come through very clearly, but I really do then would, you know, love to encourage them to be able to go through the process or, you know, help them develop their own intuition to be able to connect to their, their own as well. Mm. My, my, I have Rose and I have Joy yeah. and they're just beautiful. They have helped me so much. You talked about being very serious. You know, Joy has just brought joy back into my life and she has been my guardian angel to help me you know have joy back into my life so much as well and rose is much more eh, eh, you're not doing that <laughs> she's more like comes in and is more assertive and, and, to, off, and makes me aware that your own car getting on your own highway yes <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i love them and um, I love connecting into them and because I've connected to them so much over the years, that's, it becomes easier and easier. It's like developing that muscle, developing that connection. Um, it can be difficult at first and, but as if you stick at it and keep, they want to connect to you just as much as you want to connect to them. That's right. And because um, the energetic realms and angelic realms, they cannot interfere. So once we, once we signal our intention to communicate with them, then they will, they will, they see that as an opportunity. You know, it's like foot in the door. Like, okay, she wants to talk to me now. Um, she's open to that now. And that's great. And, um, one thing that I found was, um, 
what can happen then is that they all want to jump in, like all of your angels and guides want to jump in. And so, you you know, you can even say like one at a time, etc. you know, to, to really slow that down because it can be a little bit overwhelming and it can be quite um, what we would call uh, in the most human way is quite addictive because it is such a beautiful, gentle energy. So, you know, we must remember also like that we're here as humans. So we've got to balance that out like living on earth, but integrating the communication with the energetic realms within our everyday life so that we live here beautifully as humans um you know but with that assistance as well that for me was um, a godsend because if i um if i think about it like i could have i could have just talked to them instead of humans like (laughs) (laughs) and trust me there's been times in my life as well as like you know i (laughs) I do spend more time talking to them than humans. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I but I find now, now that I've got a better life and I understand more yes. about like how to be in my own um be in my own space and, and how to um you know, I get a lot of information from them about how to help my energy and things like that as well. So that is really helpful. So now I, I do go out into the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd go out a lot easier. So, but yeah, I, f- I find that too. And sometimes the interesting thing that I found is sometimes they, they don't have names. They have more like a, it's more like a feeling. Yep. Rather than color. an actual name. Sorry? Or a color. A color, yes. Yeah, a color. So Archangel Michael to me is, um, uh, when he appears like that, it's like a, it's like a blue. That's what I would say. It's not a light blue, like as in the barrier reef blue. It's, yeah. um, it's, so- it's a little, uh, there's a little more depth in that as well. So I see it more as like an indigo. I can be like yeah. at home at night or in the evenings and I can just see out of the corner of my eye sometimes just this like light, dark blue light or yes. yeah. flash flash of a like a dark yeah. blue in the corner of my eye. And yeah. lots of people have said that that's how they sometimes just see them around just in the corner of their eye color. Yeah. And even like white light as well. And, you know, here, I don't know what it is like in the rest of the world, but here in Australia, we've got fire alarms, um, smoke alarms in our in our homes. You know, we have to have them by law. So, you know, just be aware that sometimes it actually is that alarm, <laughs> that, that little bit of light flashing. It's that. But, you know, that's kind of what you're looking for, that um, it's like a spark of light. Yeah. Um, it can be gold. It can be, you know, different colors, etc. But that's essentially, and it's what we call an orb as well. So, but yeah, and it, um, you know, I, I'll talk to them then as well. You know, find out. You so know, doing a reading. Messages. So yeah, so doing a reading with, um, when clients come to you for a reading, often who we're connecting to is this client's guides or angels that are around them and determine for me it's depending on which angels or guides I have around them I can then also receive those messages of what they're needing help with either it's their health or their career or their you know relationships or whatever it is is that how you work sometimes uh yeah I always work I'm always guided to um each each session is different and obviously depending on what um the person's come for but they always seem to have like a clear intentional understanding except for the ones that just don't know why they've turned up and to the messages but i generally find that um that i'm I'm just guided within each session spirit knows like what i do and how i do it sometimes i'm guided to um you know um you know to with the healing for it to be more hands-on while people are sitting but it's very, very specific about whatever is needed for that person. And that's what I really love is that I I allow that to happen. I understand the the mechanics of providing a beautiful space so that so that these angelic beings, guides and angels can come through and being very, very clear about what I can do and what I need to do for that person. So they'll come through um yeah, so within that, I might see them. Um, they might communicate to me like telepathically as well. I may yeah. see them up behind the person as well because um, with the lighting, you know, it's quite um, it's quite interesting, the light in this room actually because I pick up gold very easily. So it is a gold, like they'll, um, they can appear as gold as well. So it's very interesting. 
So, um, but and they always, have the messages that you want have to communicate to this client. That's who we're, you know, that's who we're, do- that's what we're doing. And- it's not human. Like to, yeah. for us to be able to take the human out of it, it makes it stronger and it, and it helps that person. It's not what I think about a situation. These are the words that come through. Sometimes they are challenging to bring them through, but, um, and I just say, can you, can you give me another way in which to bring this through? Because this, this could be a little concerning for that person or, you know, we need to ease into that. And so they do listen to that and they'll bring through, they'll bring it through in another way. Sometimes it's just simply, look, you know, you need to pull up your socks. Here's how we want you to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> we think you'll yes. benefit from it. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just, yeah. 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 But the words are lovely. They're never, uh, they're never strong. They're never, um, they're never defamatory. They're never slanderous oh, exactly. or anything like that. Never, never, never. And that's so the that's key a really to it. Important way to tell if you are connecting to someone of the angel realm or someone of that pure vibration or not, because the messages will always come through as loving yeah. guidance, nothing yeah. mean or nasty or critical no. or something like that. We cancel, clear, and delete, and we like, you know, we do not entertain. You send those, Bye. send those over. <laughs> <laughs> that's right You're that's out of right. here <laughs> yeah so but there you go so um yeah and so i do find yeah there's different ways in which they they communicate and present themselves and and the things that they get me to do some of the things that i um work with you know within a healing it might be something for, even from like a past life it will generally be with whatever the person resonates with as well what they'd be most open to i find that spirit will bring that through um, so for some people, it might be looking at a past life or it might be looking at a past relationship to bring that um, pattern forward so that they can see it. And um, and then for others, it might be what we call multidimensional healing or frequency healing. So, you know, so I'll be telling them about like the energetic or the um, electromagnetic, I think it's called electromagnetic um, force, which is our body anyway. Um, and I'll be talking to them about that and how maybe we're doing some gritting and things like that. But it's always, always specific to that person um, to help them. Yeah. And the information is clear. It's very, very clear. And so that's that's really important because um, often when, you, you know, you're doing this work and working with the angel realm and you're asking for them for he- a healing, it's like, we need to get out of the way then and be able to trust and allow mm. that angel, whether it's Archangel Michael or Raphael or Archangel Ariel or any other pure guide. And often I, you know, I ask God and I ask the light to please send this person, whoever is of the highest quality that can help heal this issue and yes. ask for them to receive the healing, for them to receive the blessing. Again, it's nothing about what I'm doing. It's mm-hmm. I completely trust that God and, you know, source energy and divine love mm-hmm. have and know the right frequency person and, and energy to be able to heal, help this person heal. And that's 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 beautiful. It is beautiful because what I also find is that while I'm communicating with um, the realms telepathically as well, I might be having a conversation with the person and bringing through information. But in the background, I'm actually saying what we call prayers for this person, but they're, they're asking me to say this as a human on earth. And that was, that was something that I was really surprised about was that they do get me to say these prayers, you know, for these people as well to bring them in exactly what you're saying. Like, but it comes through and it's a channeling almost like, but they do ask us as humans to, to say these prayers. And it's, and these prayers that the way that they, that it is, it is specific to that person. Um, but it's generally, it takes the humanness out of it. Whereas if I was so a prayer, like when I was growing up, prayers were like this. Um, I pray for um, someone to get them better and things like that as well. Whereas that to me, um, I've been shown that actually if I was to, there's nothing wrong with praying like that, but for some people I need to pray and just say, God, help them, God, help them, God, help them to bring in exactly what they need 
Um, yeah. Because you know what? That energy, God, the divine energy, it knows what to bring through for that person. So I take that humanness out of it. But I'm very like, I'm very, very surprised all the time about how particular they are with the words that I use to say those prayers. Yeah. Mm. And I just thought I'd mention here as well that sometimes people may feel that their prayers weren't answered or that healing didn't happen and things like that. And, and you know, sometimes it's because people are blocking it unconsciously blocking it or they're you know hugely afraid of you know such um they're fearful you know if they've had issues with church or religion or anything like that they fear god they fear christ um so so sometimes i've had to work with my clients to just help soften that and just to help them release their fears Mm. of receiving that unconditional love as well because even some sometimes you know we're uncomfortable with love <laughs> receiving love and or just to allow whatever is blocking this person or sabotaging them from healing to be um removed as well if it's for their highest highest good right now well it's interesting you should talk about that because what yes. I've found in my own experience, this is my personal experience and from conversations that I've had afterwards with people as well, is that many people have turned away from God because of their experience with the church. Yes. But God is not, there is no agent between us and God. Mm-hmm. God is within us. We do not need permission to speak with God. Mm-hmm. We do not need that mm. at all. And so, and that's another thing. So once people understand, actually, whether I, I've, whether a person views it as source, organic source, divine energies, universal energy, or even God, it does not matter. The point is, is that now when they understand that they do have permission and that they are encouraged by those realms to develop a relationship with God within their personal, within their personal feelings, within their own mind, that to them is liberating and frank and then they understand that well actually now that i think about it like that that does make a lot of sense i or and for many people like myself like i loved like i really did love going into sacred buildings and churches and i still do but i'm not so keen on the sermons i'll be honest with <laughs> you and i and <laughs> still love going into the the churches but the sermons themselves I felt like I was disconnected from God and so once I understood that that was within me and I was allowed to then that was it made a big difference for me and for the people that I speak with now as well well the angels are God's messengers you know so Mm. if you want to connect to the angel realm it might be important that you are you know looking at um you know, healing that as well. For me, I have always been uncomfortable with going into some churches. There's such a, oh God, you know, for me, someone... a horrible energy. <laughs> no. Well, no. yeah, because of past lives for me, you know, where the church have, you know, have crucified or condemned, you know, Christ and you know, the female energy, and I'm reading a, a really yeah. good book at the moment on Mary Magdalene and how much the Bible and Christianity has been, you know, um, the way it is for the last 2,000 years and, you know, going against the divine feminine and how the whole Mary Magdalene divine feminine thing has not been a part of religion and Christianity and how, you know, being a woman, you know, it. That's why I've been uncomfortable for so long, but I'm working through it now. And I'm... <laughs> but it's interesting you should bring that up because I've always, um, whenever I've worked, I, I came obviously with a lot of understanding and personal experience of connecting naturally with spirit and the angelic beings. But so when I came, <laughs> I had to go and do courses to understand concepts and words that people were using within our, within our industry. And one of them was the divine feminine. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, and the way, yes, to bring the divine feminine, which is those beautiful, soft and nurturing characteristics. But it was, but my guys were saying, well, actually, 
when we were working, I noticed my guys were saying, well, actually, but what we want to do is we want to balance it so that it's not too masculine, not too feminine, but it is balanced, you know. Oh, so, yeah, so that was an interesting thing for me. But, um, yeah, but the because theme, it, it can, the feminine energy has it had to like it had, come it up had to lot. come up, but they wanted it to be balanced in a yeah. way so that it would be so that people weren't seeing it as a them and us because people were confusing human men and human women. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it was not meant to be that, it was meant to be like equality within the human race, but we were to, you know, we were to balance the divine feminine and divine masculine with, within ourselves so that it was like that and that would be the same for earth as well so yes we bring those in but we we need to to balance them and, and to, so you know yeah. there's been a huge emergence of you know that you know embracing the divine feminine and goddess energy because you know the yeah, priestess energy the goddess energy was you know so huge of part of you know the world and humanity that has been squashed and it's now so important for us females to be able to be acknowledged and empowered as well. Yeah. Well, when I was in Scotland last year, um, they, there, there is this understanding of, um, of what, what would be called non-Christian or I suppose pagan or something like that, but they aren't, but the, when he was when this tour guide was going back into the history he was saying that actually we observed the natural rhythms of the earth and we and we we understood that we observed the natural rhythms of a man and a natural with rhythm of a woman and so we understood that and no one was less no one was more but it worked in harmony mm. and that was really interesting because um you know then i i also looked at a few other, um, I suppose you'd call them um, in, Indigenous um, people as well, and it was always my understanding that they understood that as well. So here in society, it's very it's very unusual, Like, but in Western culture I found that actually it's um, as women we're supposed to be able to do it all, you know, and cope with it and everything like that. But for me, I look at, well, yeah, I can do it all. I have the choice and the option to do it all. But there are so many people who are actually, you know, working with what they know or what they they believe is the right way for us to have all these options, you know. So if we want to have children, we still got to work, we still have that career and we still go and do all this, this and this. But is that making us happy? Is that balance? And that's what um, another thing that the um, angelic realms ask, ask us to look at as people and as individuals is this making us happy? Yeah. So, you know, you've got that divine feminine which needs to come in, but part of expressing that within the world to ourselves and of ourselves is actually recognising like what makes us happy and that also helps to balance that as well. And it does make an it does have an effect on the earth and the earth's geology. Some people might find this a little bit strange, but oh, yeah. um, it does. It does. It really does. Yeah. So... So I'd love to be able to give everyone some little tools or tips on how they could maybe enhance their connection to the angel realm or to their guides. Hmm. Um, would you like to start? Have you got any? Yes, just... I do. <laughs> <laughs> A few little things that could help people. Yeah. So obviously to um, integrate this um, into your everyday life, like this connection with the energetic realms and the angelic realms and the spiritual realms with your earthly life, um, the, some of the things that, that immediately come up for me are sleep, um, hydration, and good food, good company, um, and and balance within your life, you know. So yes, work, but, you know, have that time out, etc. you know, so that's really good. Um I would also recommend um, a daily spiritual practice, which um, for me, I have, um, I will put on my website and there'll be a link from these show notes to go to it. It's a, it's a meditation and it involves like, it, it brings this beautiful light through. Um, so you're safe and protected, obviously. Um, and that lifts your vibration. And then it's a, obviously balances and aligns and does all beautiful stuff to your chakras as well um and but that then that meditation then so you can use that as a daily 
um, practice and then you can actually practice what we call the art of automatic writing so Mm. this particular meditation is you know for when you want to connect with your guide or angel and it's very very good i find that fantastic it's exciting yeah besides that you know like be just you know be discerning so i don't go around talking to my guides as such all the time um i just i just i can't do it otherwise i'm just not here enough (laughs) and um and remember to to ask for help those realms they cannot interfere so here on earth we have free will so ask for your help ask for extra angels and ask for advice and guidance and just wait they say humans have no time they have no patience like they're always on a timetable ask melissa she's always running to a (laughs) timetable so yeah so those are mine um but what about you because you've got some pretty good ones too well again it's whatever's works for you and Mm. everyone can be different but I just know Mm. that when to connect to the the angel realm and to that higher frequency it's such a subtle energy it's just a really subtle energy and often we have to raise our energy and vibration to be able to connect and blend and receive the connection strong like a strong Mm. connection and you already talked about making sure that you've got plenty of sleep and hydrated and you know that you're nourishing yourself but some things that I will just do to really connect in is I will instantly start to think about love and bring in the energy and frequency of love things that I love people that I love that bring in that pure love um, and joy so that really just helps set the the tone and starts to shift my frequency as well. I might like to hold a crystal, like a rose quartz crystal that's been charged up as well. So bringing in the energy and frequency of the things like that. Or I will um, breathe in maybe a, a beautiful essential oil like rose or or something like that peppermint something that's very high vibrational frequency and then also lighting a candle because that also just sets the space sets the intention for that light that pure light i just only want to connect to the highest of the high angels and guides for me and only me which reminds me making sure I'm grounded in my own body, in my own energy field, and I'm only calling through my angels and guides for my high schools. Well, if I'm working for me, if I'm working for a client, I'll be wanting to obviously connect to, to theirs. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, just practice. Just I just ask for anyone to, to come through, who, who, who is it that I'm needing to connect to and whether I just receive a name or a feeling or a, a color and then channel writing is just beautiful to be able to practice that, practice that. And like you said, daily spiritual practice really sets the tone and intention for your angels and guys to know, right, she's serious, she's ready, she's serious or he's serious and she is honoring this precious sacred energy and wanting to work with us and so they could get comfortable with working with you too Mm. and yeah I've got a I have a a beautiful little meditation that I'll pop up too then and connecting to your guardian angels I'll pop that up on my website hopefully with some links and also I have a, a recovery um plan a recovery guide for little earth angels in there so it's just um that's something that you might like to connect to as well if you're identifying with being a little earth angel actually it's really interesting isn't it like one i i feel almost liberated it sounds it's almost like i'm drinking the drinking the funny juice but <laughs> but it, it it's made it um it's made it a lot easier and i realize that um Yes, I've got to have boundaries, you know, in earthly and the spiritual life as well in that balance. But it's made it a lot easier when I've been consistent and when I've shown up. And when I've basically, um, by my actions, I'm shown that I'm I'm proactive, I'm engaged, I'm willing and and I'm looking to uh, move ahead on this or to make a better life or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. But that's how it shows up. 
Um, and it's just a consistency thing. It, I do experience normal life as well. Please don't think that, like, by the way that I talk or Alison talks, that we're just floating around on little clouds, you know. <laughs> we're just, we're just no. normal, normal people and we experience normal things, but we have learned um, how this connection helps our spirit and our harmony and our connection with earth and others, including ourselves. You know, it it's helps made, us be the mums and the wives, and you know, be you know, be there for people that you know we want to be. It's yeah. just helps and I us find, so much. yeah, I find I'm more I'm more engaged with life. I'm more present with life, and 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 I'm I'm stronger in myself in that I can say no or I can say yes or I can just say look, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but I'm comfortable with that. I'm I find that I'm not reacting to what other people want as much my husband would say as much <laughs> god love him we're so. still human you know but it's just been beautiful to have this this part of you know our life this lifetime as well and to be able to do it this lifetime you know and celebrate exactly. that this hasn't always been possible which is you know what my little guys and angels you know let me know there's been many past lives where you haven't been able to talk freely like this you haven't been able to have your own connection yeah. to god you've had yeah. to go to the church like you talk through so if so everyone else who is incarnate here as well on this earth at this lifetime or is listening to this podcast know that you know that could be very well true for you too that this is your lifetime mm. to be a light worker to talk about spirituality to talk about this is in your everyday life as well yeah well that's one of the things i remember you know uh when i was um look you know, i was really clear like about how i how i wanted to express my purpose of you know helping people with their connection and how i wanted you know how i wanted to do that which is you know modern um, I don't want to be hidden. I want to be able to speak about who I am and what I do. Um, and I wanted someone to, to, to talk with, you know, so that I could go out and share this. And we knew each other for a while, but you were looking and I was looking, but it wasn't the right time until then. It was suddenly time. And that is also, you know, about trusting spirit and things like that as well. And I would ask every now and again too, and I was like, come on, like, <laughs> hello, <laughs> like time's ticking here. Like I'm getting older, a couple more years and I'll be 50. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and how long I can last but you know it was also about like patience and, and it is about the right timing mm. and a lot of the things that we've done even in this time you know we are relying on intuition and we are doing things you know with this podcast and with this YouTube videos that you know that feel right for us and so we understand the earthly ways to do things but we we are really guided by what is right for us and and that's what this connection does you know, on an everyday basis. So there we are. Oh, but remember, ask no. your guides. Thank you. Be clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you thank angels. You. That's thank you. Angel. That's right. Thank you. They love thank yous. They love acknowledgement. That's right. And, That's and right. And they'll just start to, to, you know, to show themselves in little different ways and bring you little gifts and they'll show you little things in your life. And it, it, it does it does heighten your life. So there you go. Anything angel else Angel bumps. More angel bumps. Is, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> But anything else right. you'd like to add before we wrap up? I think that I think I think I've covered most things. What about yeah. you? No, I'm fine. I've realised that um, you know I get a bit excited, so it can go a bit long. So if you're listening or watching this, yeah, we just get excited about this topic. So thanks for staying with us. <laughs> Thank and you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and remember to check out the links for the meditation or go to our websites and you'll find it there as well. But we thank you for joining us again this week and we look forward to next week's episode. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Bye now. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.